Praise the living God. By the grace of God, my name is Abel Olubenga Adenaike. I live at number 18, Arami Street, Shomolu. I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. God is great. He's a wonderful God. He's a miraculous God. He's still the same today. Had it been that he's a dead God, I would not be alive today. In fact, I work with St. Gilliam Doris. I retired in 1987. When I came back home, no work to do, nothing. But in my mother's family, they are great doctors, native doctors. They called me that I should start the work. <laughs> I say to court leaves. They say yes. Okay, I started. I did it for some time, but to my greater surprise, 1993, a woman got pregnant. The pregnancy was one year, three months, no delivery. They brought her to me. I, I know the leave I will cut. I gave her a squeeze it, by the grace of God. One doctor told her she would be operated upon. Another doctor said she would be operated. The third one, so operation. Uh, the boss said, I have a papa at Shemolu. They brought her, I looked at her, I saw that the, the child, they crossed it in her stomach. I thought the woman say, hey, woman, why did they cross your speaking? Say, Baba, how do you know? I said, well, they said they will operate you. He said, yes, you will not be operated upon. I gave her the concussion, then the third day she delivered. Ha! Huh. Some women sent message to me, say, the work they do, I destroy it. Say, I will do it. Uh -uh. Who are the people? They don't mention. Then to my surprise, I learned the morning, one man came to my room and put something on my seat. I sat down. The two legs and two hands withered. They carried me to one hospital here. I stayed three days. I can't stool. I can't piss. I can't eat. In the evening, one message came to me. Somebody was talking by my side. But I was praying. I used to pray. But yet, I don't know, Lord. Somebody told me, well, I said, who are you by my side? He said, come out of this hospital, otherwise you will die tomorrow. I said, I will not die. He said, yeah, if you will not die, tomorrow, tell the doctor to discharge you. And they did, they discharge me. I said, where am I to go? He said, go home. When you go to your village, somebody will come to you and will tell you what to do. Indeed, I went. To my surprise, I am a twin born. I'm Taiwo. And my kind, they had a son. And the son is a student leader in this church. He has been preaching to me. I said, boy, uh, not me born you. What are you going to tell me? <laughs> he said, Baba, before it is too late, give your life to Christ. So oh, very, very important. I was weeping. I said, boy, no, leave me alone. He said, Baba, give your life. Okay, he came to me. Where I was see? I can't hold anything. The two legs with that, the two hands with that. They put pap in my mouth as a small picking on milk. <laughs> I said, well, my daughter came from the university. She was weeping. She said, Baba, you are going to die. Somebody tell, uh, told me, tell him you will not die. I said, I will not die. I didn't know I was coaching a fast, very strong in the Bible. It's after that I come know. Then, in the night, that night, he told me, uh, Mr. Womba, Mr. Kumuyi, the pastor, is going to preach for half our generation. I said, hey, what will I do? He said, this is your radio. I will turn it to Radio Nigeria 1. Put it by your side. Okay, I put it by my side. By then, I was about eight months sick. I couldn't eat, I couldn't walk. I took only pap. Then when I put it, when the man of God was preaching, I held it as if I'm holding my wife. So, <laughs> praise God. To my surprise, the man who is taking care of me went to the farm to look his traps and other things that he used to catch something. Then I had a voice by my side say, Ebe, I look around, I didn't see anybody. Say, get up. You are going to move today. I said, who are you? I didn't see anybody. In fact, I got up. I fell. He said, no, try and get up again. I got up, placed my hand on the window. I called my people over there. I said, people, how are you? Eh? Baba. <laughs> Praise God. They are rushing. Baba, who took you up? I said, it's Jesus. They went under the bed. They look under the bed. They didn't see anything. Ah. They say, Jesus. I say, yes. And I prayed. I said, God, if I go back to Lagos safely, I will worship you. Immediately I came back, the second or third day, there was a revival, or what do they call it, at uh, Anuluako. I told my boy, say, today, he said, sir, I said, I will go. He said, you will go. He said, I will be happy if you go. I did. It was that day I confessed my sin. I gave my life to Jesus.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We bless your name because with you all things are possible. We thank you because of the testimonies we have heard. And we know that you can do the same thing for every one of us today. We are praying that we will bless everyone today in Jesus' name. We are asking, O oh Lord, as your word will come forth, your spirit will take that word and explain to everyone so that all the needs of the life of everyone will be met in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight I want to talk to you on the great invitation. The great invitation. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 4. Verses 19 and 20. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Different invitations come from different sources in a lifetime. Some people's lives have been changed. Their destinies have been changed as well by accepting some of the invitations that come in their way. For other people, they have remained in need and they have remained in spiritual bondage because of rejecting some invitations that came unto them. In this passage I've read to you, the Lord Jesus Christ came at the seashore and he gave an invitation to some of these people just ordinary people. are not disciples yet. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, as Jesus came on the scene, remember, they had not known Jesus Christ before. They didn't know that he was the very son of God. They didn't know all that they eventually knew concerning Jesus Christ, the Lord. But he just told them, follow me. He gave them an invitation. And as he gave them that invitation, they might have rejected if they wanted to, but they accepted the invitation. Just like the invitation is coming to you today, coming from the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's saying, follow me. When he told those people, I will make you fishers of men, they might have responded, they could have responded, they don't want to become fishers of men, they just want to be fishing in their trade, because they couldn't sell the men, they couldn't trade with the men. Maybe if they didn't understand the invitation that the Lord was giving them, they would have remained like that. And yet, they just accepted the invitation of the Lord when he said, follow me, or follow after me, and I will make you fishers of men. When they received that invitation, and they accepted the thought to follow, a lot of blessings came upon their lives. One, their sins were forgotten and forgiven. It appeared that just when they stepped out in obedience, accepting the invitation of the Lord to follow after the Lord, immediately all the load of their sin, all the condemnation of their sin vanished away from them. Not only that, the peace of God entered into them. Joy entered into them. That is what always happens when a man or a woman will accept the invitation from the Lord when he says follow me and you follow when he says come after me and you come after him when he says leave all your past and put your present and future in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and you do that then it makes all the guilt all the condemnation all the problem all the evil in your life to vanish away 
And over here, it says, And straightway they left their nets, and they followed him. They left all they were doing, and they concentrated on obedience to the word of the Lord. What was the result in their lives? As I've told you, Peter or the rest of the apostles might not have known that all these results will come in their lives. Joy entering into their lives, the peace of God entering into them, their names being written in the book of life, God giving them a great heritage, not only that, giving them eventually, at a later time, sanctification, holiness of heart, purity of heart. Do you know, if they had rejected that original invitation from the Lord, they will not have got the holiness experience which they got earlier. Today, as the call of God is coming to you, today, as the invitation is coming unto you, when you are set, you will not know, you may not know, the things that will later happen in your life. But the moment you accept the invitation of the Lord, peace of mind will come. Salvation will come. Condemnation and guilt will vanish away. God will pardon your sin. And he'll write your name in the book of life. Even the angels of heaven will rejoice because of you. Not only this, it prepares you for the experience of sanctification, holiness, purity of heart. That's what he did for those disciples. Immediately they accepted the invitation of the Lord. They saw in their lives that they were just going on from one spiritual experience to another. And eventually they had their sanctification experience. It didn't stop there. That first invitation they received from the Lord prepared them for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The same thing in your own life. When the invitation comes to you, to come to Christ, to follow Christ, and to receive the pardon and the salvation of the Lord in your life. As I've told you, it prepares you for the sanctification experience, and later prepares you again for the Holy Ghost baptism, that the power of God, the anointing of the Spirit, the fire of the Holy Ghost, will come upon your life. But it starts from that false invitation you are given, if you reject that first invitation, all the other things that would have followed will never be able to follow in your life. In Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Ye that, ye that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken houses, and brethren, and sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Here Peter wanted to know. He wanted to know the inheritance. What will he gain? What will he get? What will he receive? As they have accepted the invitation of the Lord, he wanted to know what will be their portion. And a believer must want to know what's our portion? What's our inheritance? What are we going to receive from the Lord if we accept the invitation of the Lord? And Jesus told them, He said, they will become judges on the last day. He said, they will be sitting on the twelve thrones of the tribe of Israel. And they will be judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Remember that Peter was just an ordinary fisherman at the local sea, at the local seaside. Of Galilee. If he had not accepted the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he would have been just an ordinary fool, ordinary fisherman. Nobody would have known him outside the shores of Galilee, outside the province of Galilee. But because he received the invitation of the Lord, now he is known. Not only that, he will become one of the judges 
judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You see, when you accept the invitation of the Lord in your life, it makes you to pass from being ordinary to being extraordinary in your life. It gives you opportunities and privileges that you never thought of, that you never dreamt of. Over here it says, they will become judges. Not only that, he said, everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren or sisters, or father or mother or wife. What does that mean? It means, while the Lord is calling you, there may be people hindering you. There may be people tying you down. And these people that are tying you down, they do not want you to accept the invitation of the Lord upon your life. Here the Lord is saying, if you can break that yoke, if you can snap that rope, and if you can set yourself free from whatever is tying you down, not to receive the invitation of the Lord, and you forsake the opinions, the ideas or ideologies of your relatives, of even a close person like your husband or your wife, and you say, the Lord is calling me, I'm going to accept, I'm going to receive the invitation of the Lord. When you receive that invitation, then you say, these are the things that will come upon your life. That even in this life, you receive a hundredfold. Here the Lord told them that just because they have, received the, they have received the invitation, and they have honored that invitation, He will give them a hundredfold. And then they shall receive, inherit everlasting life. They will inherit everlasting life. And so we need to understand that as the Lord is calling everyone, if you have not been born again, He's calling you to salvation. He's saying, come, receive forgiveness, receive pardon, receive the opportunity or the privilege of your name entering into the book of life. If you have been born again, the Lord is still giving you another invitation. Invitation to the holiness experience. Invitation to sanctification experience. The Adamic nature in you will be uprooted. All the evil within you, all the nature of sin within you, will be, will be taken away by the sanctifying power and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when you receive that invitation, it prepares you for another thing again. The power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. The power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. Because it's also inviting you that you receive power in your life. It says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea. And it says, to the uttermost part of the earth. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 15, and verse 16. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Azel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shephat, of Ebel Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Here the Lord God of heaven was sending Elijah. That he'll give an invitation to Elisha. And as he gave this invitation to Elisha, he'll call him that the Lord has need of him. The Lord was calling him. And he came to Elisha. Elisha did not know that the Lord has spoken anything to Elijah. He was just an ordinary farmer. And he continued the farming. Just like you may not know that the Lord has any purpose in your life. That the Lord is thinking about you. That the Lord is even inviting you. Elisha did not know that the Lord was inviting him. The Lord was calling him. And yet the Lord has spoken to Elijah about Elisha. Please, turn the cassette over. As he spoke to Elijah about Elisha, eventually Elijah came to Elisha. And in verse 19, so he departed then and found Elisha. 
the son of Shephard, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. That was the invitation. It was a symbol of sin. He was being invited to the ministry. He was being invited to the very presence of God. He was being invited to serve the Lord in a closer or greater capacity. Maybe Elisha did not know that the Lord wanted to do this great thing upon his own life. But then as the mantle came upon him, and as Elijah signified that he was being called, eventually he responded. What if he had not responded? You would not have known his name. I would not have known his name. But he accepted the invitation. The invitation is coming to you today as I told you. What if you don't respond? Heaven will not have a place for you. What if you don't respond? The angels will not rejoice over you. What if you don't respond? You will not be known in the kingdom of God. What if you don't respond? Your ministry or your life will just be a mediocre life. What if you, don't if you don't respond and accept the invitation of the Lord? Then God will not be your father. But you see, Elisha, he responded to the invitation that the Lord was giving him through Elijah. And as he responded, then he inherited the power of God. If you know the story of the life of Elisha, you'll know that he received a double portion of the Spirit of God. Not only that, he received the power of God upon his life. And it was, he was later used of God to even raise the dead and to perform many miracles. All those things will not have been possible if he did not receive the invitation that was given at this very time. The same thing for you today. You will not know of the power of God, of a satisfying life, of a good life, if you neglect the invitation that the Lord is giving you today, and the Lord is calling you, if you have not given your life to the Lord, is saying, come. He wants you. He needs you. And he wants you to give your life to the Lord so that everything in your life will totally change. As I've told you, invitations have come to different people at different times. And yours is coming today. Maybe that you are being called today to salvation. It may be you are being called to sanctification or holiness or purity of heart. It may be that you are being called to the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Or it may be that the Lord is calling you to a, to a renewed, revived experience of the Lord. You see, if you respond, I will say, yes, Lord, I'm coming. Yes, Lord, I'm responding now. Yes, Lord, I break all the yoke. I want all the ropes that tie me down to be snatched. And I want to yield myself completely unto you. When you respond like that, it makes you to become an inheritor, an heir of all good things coming from heaven. Moses stretched for the invitation to the father-in-law some time ago in Numbers chapter 10 and verse 29. Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, were journeying unto the place of the which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. He spoke to Hobab, the Midianite or the father-in-law and Moses was very direct he said we're journeying to the place of the witch the Lord said I will give it you God is giving us a gift God is giving us a good place God is bringing us to the land playing with milk and honey and he said come come with us and we will do you good the same thing you are being called today. As a church, the Lord has done many, many wonderful things for us. 
multitudes of people who have been given the joy of salvation, a type of joy we never experienced before we came to the Lord, joy unspeakable. Multitudes of us have had all the guilt, all the burden, all the load of sin rolled away. What we couldn't experience before we received the invitation of the Lord. And the Lord has spoken good concerning us. Not only that, whenever we pray, God answers our prayer. That will show you that the Lord has spoken good concerning us. And then just like Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Preguel, the Midianite, his father-in-law, saying, we're journeying unto the place of the wheat, the Lord has said, I will give it to you. The same thing we are telling all our neighbors. The same thing we are telling all our friends. We are saying we have got much, but there is yet more to get. We have got saved, yet there is more. We have got sanctified, yet there is more. Many of us have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, yet there is more. The Lord has spoken good concerning us. And what we are saying now is sending that invitation to you. We are saying, come down with us. Come down with us. Leave all your traditional religion. Leave all your native medicine. Leave all your idols you are worshipping. Leave all the gangs you are following. Leave all the evil practices in your life. And leave all the sins that you are committing. Come down with us. The Lord is calling you. The body of Christ, we are calling you. The children of God, we are calling you. We are saying, come down with us and we will do the good. Yes, we can. We can pray for you. And the Bible assures us that any two of us, where two of us or three of us are gathered together, Jesus is in the midst. And he says, if we bind anything, it's found in heaven. If we lose anything on earth, it's loose in heaven. The Lord has spoken good concerning his people. The Lord is calling you. Do you remember when God called Abraham? Then he told Lord, he said, Lord, God is calling me, will you follow? God is telling me to come and I'm going to respond to that invitation. Lord, how about you? Abraham extended the call of God for him, the invitation of God for him, to Lord. Just the same thing we're telling you now. The Lord has called us, we have responded. As many as have been born again, as many as have given their lives to the Lord. And now we, like Abraham, we're, we're extending the invitation to you. And we're saying, why don't you come? Because the Lord who has done us good, he will do you good as well. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and in silver, and in gold. When Abraham responded to the call of God, when he honored the invitation that the Lord gave him, the Lord blessed him. He was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. But I told you, he stretched forth, he extended the invitation to the Lord. What then happened to the Lord? Look at verse 5. Lord also, which went with Abraham, at flocks, and hurts and tanks. You see, because Lord responded to the invitation that God had given Abraham. And Abraham said, Lord, I cannot leave you behind. Do not stay behind. The Lord has promised good concerning me. And I want to take you along. And it will do you a lot of good if you respond to the invitation as I am calling you. Look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Come now. Why will you wait? It says he is expecting you. He wants to put an end to your problem. He wants to wipe all your sins away. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. He wants to roll away all your problems. Come now. Why will you wait until it's very dark? Why will you wait until the storm outside is greater than your strength? Why will you wait until the devil comes nearer you? 
Why will you wait until the enemies of the world come to crush you and come to break your boat? Why will you wait until you're almost dropping into hellfire? Come now. Why won't you come now? While the love of God is waiting for you. While he's saying, no, don't wait until you are better. All those other people that have given testimony, when I call them, I saved them. You cannot save yourself. You say, well, I'm a great sinner. So was I before I came. All these good people around you now, made good by the grace of God, so were they before they came. All the people were called brothers and sisters now. Oh, we were very bad before we came. Oh, you said, I've done very many evil things, so we have. Come now. Don't wait for any other thing. While the Lord is calling you, and he says, I give you a great invitation. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The invitation of the Lord is coming to you today. It says in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And in verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. The Lord is calling you. I don't understand why any man will look at Jesus with all the riches of heaven, with pardon, with a ticket in his hand he's going to give you to be able to get to heaven, with a mansion waiting for you in heaven, with the angels waiting to rejoice on your behalf, wanting to write your name in the book of life, I don't understand why you will see all those wonderful things, great things, and you will still reject. No, you cannot reject. It says, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You, you have unrest in your heart now, you'll drop it at the feet of Jesus. You have a body in your heart now, you'll drop it at the feet of Jesus. You have condemnation in your heart now, you'll drop it at the feet of Jesus. You have confusion in your mind now, you'll drop it at the feet of Jesus. It says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Oh, you say, I have a lot of problems, that's why it's calling you. I have a lot of confusion, that's why it's calling you. I have a lot of sins in my life, that's why it's calling you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord is calling you. If you have never been born again, if you have never given your life to the Lord, He's inviting you. But my brother, remember, if you are already born again, He says, come, come closer. You have come, but you are not close enough. He says, come closer and consecrate everything on the altar of sacrifice. And bring your life and bring your heart, the heart that still has evil thoughts, the heart that still has the Adamic nature, the heart that still has that uprising of anger and animosity in the heart, the heart that is not perfect towards God, that heart that is not transparent before God. It says, come closer. You have come, but come closer and get sanctified. And when you honor that invitation as a believer, then he will sanctify you. And by the sanctifying blood, by the sanctifying fire, he will dry up all that fountain of the original sin. He will uproot all that root of original sin. He will cleanse all that stain of the original sin. He says, believer, come closer. Because he wants to sanctify you. Maybe you are sanctified, but you are weak. Maybe you are sanctified, but then your heart is not full of the glory of God. It's not full of the Holy Ghost. It's not full of the power from on high. It says, come closer still, higher ground, closer relationship, more intimate fellowship. It says, you've been saved, you've been sanctified, come closer yet. Because you need power upon your life. You need the fire of the Holy Ghost upon your spirit. You need to be overwhelmed, enveloped, encircled by the power of the Holy Ghost. It says, you are in the kingdom, get in the center of that kingdom. Get in the inner circle, get in the inner chamber. You know, it's just like in the Old Testament. When the worshippers came, 
they came from their houses. The first place they got to was the outer court. That's like salvation. Whenever they come like that, they already become worshippers in that outer court. But then the Lord wanted them closer. And therefore they dress nearer into the holy place. That's why the Lord is calling us today. Come to the holy place. Don't stand right there in the outer court. Don't just, don't just say, well, I'm already in the kingdom. I'm already born again. I'm already a child of God. Come closer into the holy place and be sanctified. And be holy within and without. And have that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. But then, the high priest that was closest to God, he will go within the veil and he will go into the holy of holies, into the holiest of all. That's why the Lord is saying, after you've been in the holy place, you've been sanctified, your heart has been purged and cleansed, the Adamic nature has been uprooted, the stain of the original sin has been cleansed away, he says, come closer still and come into the holy sanctuary of the Lord, the holy of holies, where the abundant power of the Holy Ghost is poured upon your life. Why are you waiting behind? Why are you waiting behind? Since you have come, why don't you come closer? Since you have been sanctified, why don't you come into the inner sanctuary, into the Holy of Holies, where, you'll be, where the Holy Ghost will be poured abundantly upon you for the promises unto you and to your children, to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, I've been talking to you about the invitation of the Lord. There's another part to this. There are other people, they called the Lord. You see, there are, it's a two-way invitation. The Lord invites you. And sometimes it is necessary for you to invite the Lord. Look at John chapter 4. John chapter 4. From verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea in Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he will come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 49, the nobleman says unto him, Sir, come. Sir, Lord Jesus, come down before my child dies. He was inviting the Lord. But let me ask you this. What if a friend invited you? And you rejected the invitation. And later you now invited that friend. You know what he will do? He will reject your own invitation as well. What if now when the Lord is calling you? If you reject his invitation. When later you call him. As a great physician to come and heal you. As a great provider to come and provide for you. As a great deliverer to come and deliver you. As a great supplier to come and supply all your need. As a great comforter to come and comfort you in trouble. As a great paraclete to come and be a helper alongside with you. When you later invite him, he will say, But you rejected my invitation. I called you to be saved. You are not saved. I invited you to be sanctified. You rejected. I invited you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You rejected. Now that you are calling the Lord, what do you think he will do then? In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. Verse 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. The Lord is inviting you. And if you honor his invitation, then any time you invite him as a great physician to come and heal you, then he will. The Lord is inviting you that you come closer. Then any time you invite him to come and be your deliverer, then he will come. The Lord is inviting you into the inner circle, the holy of holies, the holy sanctuary of the Lord. That the power of the Holy Ghost will be outpoured upon your life. If you accept his invitation, then any time you call him to, have, to meet a particular need in your life, he will answer. The Lord is calling every one of us today. If you are not born again yet, the Lord is calling you so you can be born again, forgiven, saved, your name written in the book of life. 
if you're already born again, the Lord is calling you into a closer walk with the Lord, a closer intimate relationship with the Lord. Let us answer his call. Let us respond to his call. He says, come, come now. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, we accept the invitation of the Lord. Rise up on your feet. The Lord is calling you. If you have your request written on paper, you can raise it up. If you don't just raise up your hand, the Lord knows the requests anyway, and He'll fulfill them. If we have honored His invitation, then He will honor our invitation. Father, we thank you for this time. We know with you all things are possible. You have told us that whenever we are sick, you are the Lord that heals us. And therefore, I pray for everyone here tonight, whatever the sickness may be, I pray that you'll touch their bodies and you'll heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that for those who have demonic oppression upon them, I'm asking that you'll deliver them in Jesus' name. For those who have any brain problem here tonight, I'm asking that your mighty hand will touch their brains. And you'll take those problems in their brains away in Jesus' name. Whatever other problems are represented in those papers that are raised up. As these brethren are raising up their hands, so Lord, I'm asking that you'll show your mighty power upon their lives. And you'll deliver them from every oppression of the devil in Jesus' name. I pray that you'll deliver them. I pray that you'll set them free. Everything they have invited you to do for them. Inviting you as their great physician. Inviting you as their great provider. Inviting you as their great deliverer. Oh Lord, I'm asking that you'll do it for them in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to raise your voice to the Lord. Thank him for what he has done. 